East Tennessee State Buccaneers Rodney English and Marty Story at forward Darrell Jones the center Mr. Jennings along with Major Gear in the backcourt Iowa no substitute a lot Rodell Davis number 15 and Chris Street number 40 up front James Winters the center and Troy Skinner and James Moses in the backcourt East Tennessee State with the ball and East Tennessee State is going to have to hit from the three point area against this zone put up by Iowa. And the watch is number 22, Keith Mr. Jennings from Culpeper, Virginia. He's a senior and averaging over 20 a game. Into Rodney English, first shot of the game missed, and the rebound by James Winters of Iowa. Troy Skinner is the point guard. He's a junior. James Moses, the other guard, has been playing well. Moses puts up the shot, rebound by English. And English is the leading rebounder on this team, and he's only 6'4". Major Gear up to Marty Story, 34, inside to English. Moses picks up the rebound. Iowa 20 and 10 on the season, with no seniors on the squad. James Winters out of bounds, still Iowa ball. The officials working this first round matchup. John Clockerty from Raleigh, North Carolina, David Day out of Spring Hill, Florida, and Frank Scagliata out of Penn Argyle, Pennsylvania. Winters gets the roll, averaging four a game. He's a freshman from Joliet, Illinois. And we're seeing that defensive trap being extended by Iowa. They'll do that, and they'll fall back into his zone. Major Gear hits a three, and that's pivotal for East Tennessee. State. Major Gear and Albert West have to have big games shooting the three-point shot. West will be coming off the bench for the Buccaneers out of Johnson City, Tennessee. Southern Conference champions and a gaudy 28-4 record. Here is Chris Street. Rebound. Story knocked away, but it's East Tennessee State's ball. Now, right now, with the lineups in the game, East Tennessee State can match up defensively and play the man-to-man. -man. But when AC comes in the ball game, AC Earl, that is, now that we have a seven-footer, and that'll change the complexion of the game and see how East Tennessee State responds to that. Tennessee State has averaged 95 points a game and a differential of 18 between what they've allowed. That's pretty impressive. Very much so. And there's a team that, you know, lost one of their key players in, the, in, the, in their tournament, uh, Calvin Talford, who was averaging 14.6 a game. Rodney English is fouled going to the basket. Iowa with the first foul of the game, and it's called against Chris Street. And all of a sudden, we're going to get people off the bench, including the much-awaited A.C. Earl, who is the leading scorer for Iowa at over 16 a game. And their top rebounder, and coming in with him, will be Val Barnes, a sophomore from Wichita. Now, a few things that this East Tennessee State likes to do. They feel, at the offensive end of the court, they want to move the ball, force teams to play defense for an extended period of time, feeling that that'll wear them down as the game goes on and hurt them a little bit at the offensive end of the court. Ranked 12th in two polls, 17th in another. This is not a team you can dismiss easily. They were in the top 20. You mentioned they lost Calvin Talford, their second leading scorer. What about Craig Dennis? Greg Dennis, the center, early in the year. And last year, Dennis, who was 6'11", averaged nearly 20 points a game. So right there, you're seeing a team losing, you know, almost 35 points a game, but having the mental toughness to hang in there and overcome a lot of adversity. Now we're seeing Iowa, what they should be trying to do is get the ball inside. Moses, he's been very strong as of late. Earl challenge, wins the rebound, and a follow-up inside by James Winters. Tell you, East Tennessee State battled against the offensive glass and came out with it. Yeah, and will they be able to sustain it? Will they wear down? That's going to be the big question. Marty Story fires a three, wild and misses, but there with the rebound and converting is Rodney English for his second basket. And that's one thing Iowa's got to do in this game to win. They're going to have to dominate the defensive boards. Iowa is 8-3 and three against the field in the NCAA tournament. Pretty impressive with wins over UCLA, among others. A.C. Earl with his first basket. And then so far, they haven't looked to double down 
and make it a little tougher on AC Earl in that low post. One man against him, he should have a big advantage. Mr. Jennings with the ball, he has yet to attempt a shot in this game. And nearly four minutes have gone by. Uh, don't worry, he's, I think he's so <laughs> smart that he reads the whole thing. He's got uh, so many responsibilities out there. Here's Major Gear, who's already hit one three. Moses with the rebound. I thought you said, don't worry, he'll put up enough of them. <laughs> yes, he will, don't worry. <laughs> inside to AC Earl. Earl going up against Darrell Jones and a foul inside. And that's where Iowa could have an advantage. So it's not a big team, but Earl gives him some height inside. Uh, to say the least, a big advantage. We have, you know, AC is nearly seven feet tall and Daryl Jones is 6 8 and he's got to be more physical forcing him out on the court Kevin Smith among many coming in for Iowa right now will bring you up to date there's Tom Davis in his sixth NCAA appearance he's won 11 of 16 games in the NCAA tournament with both Boston College and Iowa now the difference between Street and Skinner is Street will come in there he's a little quicker a little bit more, I think can pick up and put a little more defensive pressure and he'll look to penetrate with the basketball whereas Skinner he's looking to just set the team up and when there's double teams or breakdowns he's looking for the three as first round action gets underway on four sites here in the tournament Jerry Pelfrey has come into the game for East Tennessee State and a foul Rodell Davis Let's take a look at what's going on at College Park, Maryland. The half of the East region, Oklahoma State over New Mexico. Watch out for Eddie Sutton. They'll play the winner of NC State in Southern Mississippi. And a steal by Chris Street. And on a turnover. And firing away for a three and missing was Val Barnes. And the rebound into the hands now of Mr. Jennings, who is averaging 20. Great free throw shooter, three point, you name it, he can do it. And he's showing great poise and leadership. He's not forcing anything. He's going to let the offense come to him. Pelfrey, whose brother John, of course, plays for Kentucky, Rick Patino. And Pelfrey fires away and hits a three. He's averaging nearly seven a game and an outstanding three point shooter. 45% three point shooter and a pushing foul. And going at it for. Is Kevin Smith and Mr. Jennings jaw to jaw? Yeah, I think uh, Kevin Smith was talking a little trash to Mr. Jennings. And here's the penetration. Good move right to the basket and looking to penetrate. Now we see him mouthing off. Well, I think if that happens again, I wouldn't be surprised to see a technical foul called uh, by the officials because you're not allowed to do that. They're close in height. <laughs> Rodell Davis misses, and here's Jennings. Jennings picked up the personal foul, by the way. It was his first. Pelfrey hit a three. Works his way in, and no basket if it goes, and we will have a foul call against East Tennessee State. Foul was on Alvin West. In the southeast region, in Louisville, Pittsburgh with an overtime win over Georgia, they'll face Kansas New Orleans survivor, which is getting underway now. So the fouls right now, Alvin West, who came off the bench, Mr. Jennings and Darrell Jones each have one for East Tennessee State. Davis and Street have picked up fouls for Iowa. Now we see that East Tennessee is extending their defense. A.C. Earl is the big man trying to help out. He's got Jones all over him. Ball knocked away and out of bounds. It's going to be Buccaneers ball, says John Clockerty. And what we saw that time down the court, East Tennessee State was denying every pass, cutting off the passing lanes. James Winters, who's a 6'5 freshman who started, is back in, and A.C. Earl goes out for Iowa. And also in the game, Trazell Silvers, who's a freshman from Irvington, Virginia. Number 21, who is a big man, a center, replacing Darrell Jones. 6'9", so they lose some height to the Buccaneers with this substitution. On the steal. Davis. Out of the hands of Val Barnes. Winters kicks it away, and it's going to be Buccaneers ball again. Again, that tenacious defense by the East Tennessee. Fourth turnover for Iowa. 
So on the floor right now for the Buccaneers, Keith Jennings, number 22, Rodney English, number four, Alvin West, a three-point shooter, number 10, Trezell Silvers, number 21, and Jerry Pumphrey, number 30. Iowa back into their zone, one, two, two zone. And Mr. Jennings misses his first three of the game and the rebound by Rodell Davis and a foul called against the Buccaneers. That'll be their fourth team foul of this first half. And it's Pelfrey with the personal foul. That is his first. Skinner, the point guard, is back in now for Iowa. Chris Street is in there as well. James Moses is also in the backcourt. And an offensive foul called against Troy Skinner, the junior from Palmer, Iowa. That's three straight turnovers by Iowa, and Skinner comes in to try and settle this ball club down. And right here, he just runs over the defensive man. Should have held up. Should have been more under control. A big asset that Skinner brings this team is steadiness. Pelfrey on the inbounds pass. 10 to 6. The Buccaneers lead the Hawkeyes. Iowa scored the first basket, but it's been East Tennessee State since then. Now, Iowa is not, when they do go to their full court trap, but they're not putting the type of pressure you normally see them put on the ball. I just wonder if they're a little concerned with Mr. Jennings getting that ball and breaking them down at the other end. Alvin West with the ball, the senior from Havelock, North Carolina. They're not afraid to hit threes. That is a two-point basket, however, by Alvin West. You know, when you look at East Tennessee State, you have to remember this team is tournament-tested. They've been playing in this tournament now for the last several years. A.C. Earl back in the game, and now they have given Alvin West credit for a three-point basket. Tennessee is three of six from three-point range, and they'll be shooting a lot from there this afternoon. 13 to six, Buccaneers in front of the Hawkeyes. And you see their quickness out here defensively, coming out, denying the passes, making it difficult to get it inside. The AC Earl has not touched the ball the last several minutes. And a foul is called. Is it Pelfrey again? If it is, it'll be a second, and two fouls on Pelfrey. They need him for the outside shooting uh, up front. They have enough backcourt people who can fire away. And they also need his size. If he's not in there or Daryl Jones, they drop their tallest player is 6'4". So they, they can really in trouble against Iowa on the boards. So Marty Story, 6'3", junior, come back in. And a three-point shot for Skinner, his first points of the game. He's a 46% shooter from the threes. Now we see Iowa extending that defense and playing with a little more intensity. Mr. Jennings, and he's picked up there by James Moses at 6-4. Pelfrey misses a three. Earl the rebound. Now they have changed it back, we understand. Uh, Alvin West with a two-point basket. So the score is 12-9. Change that. And Major Gear will add. Basket by Silvers. Take that, Trezell Silvers. 14 to 9 the score. How does um, Shaquille O'Neal come back and perform after being out for two weeks? Barnes, all over him is Alvin West. Yeah, the big thing for Iowa right now is their offense, not their defense. Traveling is called against Val Barnes will turn the ball over. Seconds ago, you saw Mr. Jennings have his foot worked on. He was taken out of the game, and Eric Palmer is only 5'6 with the ball now. 5'6, dunks, and can run a 4-2-40. Trezell Silver hits the shot. It is now 16-9, East Tennessee State looking good so far. Not only, they're the ones with the poise out here on the court right now. They're executing their offense and their game plan, whereas Iowa is not showing their patience offensively. Keep in mind, Iowa has no seniors on the squad, so this is a young team. 
Moses with the jumper. James Moses, who has averaged 20 points a game in his last four. He's a streaky player. When he gets it going, he can hit from anywhere. Here's Pelfrey, and right on top of him is Kevin Smith. Alvin West, and that's a three for Alvin West, his first of the game. And it's 19 to 11, and Tom Davis has a problem because the Buccaneers are beating Iowa's full court pressure. Beating the pressure and beating the zone, they're going to have to make some adjustments. Great steal coming from the weak side by Story. And he was originally a wide receiver at Clemson before he transferred. He looked like one on that play <laughs> going after the ball. He knows how to pick him off. That was the eighth turnover for the Hawkeyes here in the first half. Just under 10 minutes to go. As you notice, East Tennessee State many times will have four players on the perimeter and just one on the inside, putting a lot of pressure on this on this zone being uh, of, of uh, Iowa zone. Eric Palmer is a freshman from Boiling Springs, South Carolina. That's an interesting town. It's hot in the summertime. <laughs> Here's Alvin West. This is a three rebound AC Earl inside. Earl and Smith, along with Moses, Winters, and Barnes. The five in there now for Iowa. Tom Davis substitutes liberally. The thing that has surprised me is the effectiveness of East Tennessee State's defense keeping the ball out of the lane area. Because with all the defensive pressure they're putting on. A three-point shot is good by James Moses, who hit 34 percent of them. He had his career high of 30 points against Illinois in the last four games. Moses has been a red-hot player for Iowa. Silvers trying to get his own rebound, and let's see if they call a foul over the top. No, it's off um, AC Earls. Substitutions coming in. Skinner, Street, and Rodell Davis all in for Iowa. And Mr. Jennings has checked back in, replacing Eric Palmer for the Buccaneers. And the pass to Moses gets the layup over the 5'7", Mr. Jennings. Well, Mr. Moses has really ignited the Buckeyes. He's come out here, that's his third consecutive field goal, and he's just done a great job. Rodney English coming in. And going out is Trezell Silvers, so Pelfrey will in that bound the ball. Rodney English, Alvin West, Marty Story. Both benches have been warned for a delay of game violations by the officials. Mr. Jennings has not scored yet. He's only taken one shot. Yet East Tennessee State leads by three right now. Pelfrey fouled by Skinner from behind, and that will be the second personal on Skinner and the fourth team foul against Iowa. Val Barnes, who had a twisted ankle against Northwestern, has come in replacing James Moses for Iowa, and Kevin Smith, the point guard, comes in for Troy Skinner, who goes out with two. There was no injury, by the way, to Mr. Jennings. He just had his ankle retake. Good play by Street on the inbounds pass, and here's Moses with Humphrey back. Barnes misses. Iowa's going to get another chance. No. Now that's the third time they have forced a turnover with the ball out of bounds under their own basket. Mr. Jennings fires for three, and he finally gets his first points with 7.49 remaining in the first half. Kevin Smith with the penetration. Full court press now with Street harassing English on the inbound. They break it easily, two on one with AC Earl back. Marty Story with the reverse layup. And that's what East Tennessee wants to do. They want to attack the trap, treating it just like a fast break. 
Eight-point lead was the biggest for the Buccaneers in this first half. The only time Iowa led was the first basket of the game. Can you remember the last time AC uh, Earl has touched the ball in the low post? And the Buccaneers lead despite the fact that Mr. Jennings only has scored three points in this game. They've done an excellent job with the pressure on him out on the point, uh, but the wingman, uh, West Gear, have been able to hit those three-point shots. James Moses in the game for Iowa. That was Kevin Smith. Full court pressure, and it has not affected East Tennessee State so far. Not at all. Street fell down. Took him a while to get up. Jennings starting to get going. Hits another basket. He's got five. He's so patient. He does everything without, within the offense. He hasn't just taken it upon himself to, to go out there and penetrate and try to do things out of the outside of the context of the set offense. Moses traveled trying to get a step inside. Now, you think they're conscious of Mr. Jennings? Watch Mr. Street, number four, and he just go right over the top of him. First and ten. And you know, the rule is that every time a Skinner comes back, somebody guards Jennings, we have to call him Mr. as well as Mr. <laughs> yeah, Jennings. Yeah, they, yeah, That's a rule. <laughs> yeah. Now here they go again against the trap. Mr. Jennings. Yeah. Do I have to refer to you as Mr. Stockton? You got the idea. Goal it's going to count. And that'll be Rodney English with his sixth point of the game, Mr. Cunningham. <laughs> in Salt Lake City, Seton Hall against Pepperdine in the first round. They're leading by seven points right now. We'll get the score for you. Thirty-two twenty-five, Seton Hall leading Pepperdine in the first round. And a pushing foul away from the ball, Darrell Jones. That'll be his second personal. 28 to 20 is the score in favor of East Tennessee State. 28 and four coming in this game. Six team fouls against East Tennessee State and now you can make it seven and so I was in the bonus as Marty Story. I think he could play wide receiver plus several other positions. For football. Big and strong that time he just he left his feet. He's got to keep your feet defensively and stay on the ground. You can't go for the pump fake. Bonus is in effect now, and Rodell Davis will be on the line. Big story for Davis, who started the first 18 games of the season, went to the bench, and then came back and scored 19 points against Ohio State in the big win for the Hawkeyes in the final regular season game. With big wins at Indiana and the finale against Ohio State. Got him. And I think people make too much of starters and coming off the bench, especially the way Tom Davis rotates his players. The important thing is who's on the court in the finish if it's a close ball game. Davis hits both free throws. And the lead is six for the Buccaneers. Marty Story, wide open. Pops off into the hands of Major Gear. Gear is in the backcourt with Mr. Jennings. And here's Rodney English. Eight points for Rodney English, and now it is up Rodney to 30 to 22. You now, see, watching Rodney English, you can see why he's the best rebounder on the ball court. As quick as he gets off the floor, he explodes. This is a fun team to watch, the Buccaneers. So well coached. AC Earl looking for the ball. Skinner doesn't get it to him in time, and now they're going to have a shoving foul. Call, let's see if it's Jones, the middleman. Now, being physical, fronting, very active in there. Jones is doing a good job. And then English came over and bumped him and picked up the foul. It was actually Major Gear who they Excuse called me. for the foul. So here's AC Earl, who has not started the last three games. He pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor after an argument with his girlfriend. And uh, Tom Davis decided to sit him down and not start him for three games. And now today would be four. on the short end of right now. Val Barnes misses. Whistle and a foul inside. It'll be against 
the Hawkeyes. And A.C. Earl with his first foul. Well, Daryl Jones is just doing a great job defensively in there, getting around, fighting A.C. Earl, who he's giving up several inches to, and then keeping him off the offensive boards. That's quite a chore. James Winters will come into the game for A.C. Earl. Val Barnes also goes out, and Kevin Smith comes in. So right now there are two point guards in the game for Iowa, Troy Skinner and Kevin Smith. Buccaneers, a poised team, Southern Conference champions. Against the Big Ten surprise this year. Good defense, good pressure on the ball there by Iowa. Not allowing James to pull up for that jump shot. Here is Major Gear for a three misses. English, 6'4", he looked like a 6'10 there. English beating Darrell Jones and a foul call against Iowa. This is a poised, patient team out here. One thing, when you play a zone, you don't have a man that you look for to box out when the shot goes up. And when you have a quick player, such as English in there, he's going to be able to penetrate, get to the offensive glass, which we've seen him do now several times. Here's Darrell Jones, who's only a 39% free throw shooter. This is the first. We talked to Alan LaForce after 33 years. He almost gave up coaching, and he says, I still wonder if I'm dreaming about what's happening. He wakes up in the morning, and he's just so thankful for this opportunity. And he replaced an outstanding coach there in Les Robinson, who's at North Carolina State now. Well, Jones missed both free throws, gets the ball back, and Mr. Jennings misses a three into the hands of James Moses. Trailing by eight, Kevin Smith went right around Mr. Jennings, but it's out of bounds, and they turn it over again to East Tennessee State. Jerry Pelfrey back in the game, replacing Marty Story for the Buccaneers. And A.C. Earl will come in for Chris Street. Iowa's turned it over 11 times in his first half. But you, they just can't afford to do that, as we, we saw in the first game. Pelfrey. Jones with a reverse layup, averaging only four points a game, and Darrell Jones now with his first pass. Remember we talked about at the top, one thing that Iowa had to do to win this ball game was to dominate the defensive boards. They're not only getting beat on the offensive boards, they must have given up seven or eight offensive rebounds already in this first half. As a result, the Buccaneers have their biggest lead of the game, and Winters loses it out of bounds. No, touched last by East Tennessee State. Here at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, where East Tennessee State's Buccaneers lead Iowa by 10, 32 to 22, with three and a half minutes to go in the first half. Iowa in the light uniforms, and Darrell Jones saves it beautifully to Rob D. English. Mr. Jennings off the glass against the bigger Jay Webb, who's a 6'8 sophomore just coming for Iowa. Oh, right now, East Tennessee State is just out hustling the Iowa Hawkeyes. Val Barnes misses inside. There were two guys on the same team <laughs> trying to get the rebound and traveling his call. One was Rodney English. Iowa has not scored a basket in the last four minutes to play. And they're going to have to find a way to get the ball inside. <laughs> like that. On cue, A.C. Earl. Here comes the full court pressure. Maybe as the game goes on, it wears down East Tennessee State. So far, they've been equal to it. Yeah, I, I think that this group will be on the head. Believe it. If, if they're ahead at halftime, that energy level, because of being ahead, will just add more incentive for them to get by the, the Hawkeyes. Rodney English. Rodney English has 10 points. Came in averaging 14. The reason that's open is they're so conscious of the three-point shooters, it opens up the middle because it extends the defense. Jay Webb was in trouble. Here's Earl. Off balance scores anyway. Yeah, but now all of a sudden, this is how rattled right now the Hawkeyes are. You have a seven-footer out on the court trying to create something offensively one-on-one. -on -one. That's not the way Tom Davis wants his offense run. The lead is eight. This lead was 10 and on the turnover. Iowa trying to get something back before the end of the half. 
Here's Troy Skinner, and he hits another three. That's his second of the game. Five-point lead. Turnover again. Val Barnes. Now the press is working. And their defense has created those two opportunities. Let's see how East Tennessee State reacts to the first pressure they've received. And you have to tip your hat to the Hawkeyes because they were just floundering out there, but they found that energy and got themselves going again. Mr. Jennings gets room, feeds Rodney English. Rebound, Darrell Jones draws the foul. Alvin West replaces Major Gear in the lineup for East Tennessee State. Darrell Jones, as we said, only a 39% free throw shooter, has missed three thus far. And he hits one, breaking a 7 0 Iowa run. Here is Trezell Silvers, who will come in for Darrell Jones, who did a good job keeping the ball alive. Not a good job. Excellent. Here's a long pass. Barnes. Making Rodell Davis. Sorry, and now on the turnover, number 13 against Iowa here in the hand. Just have the court spread, extending the defense of Iowa, having to come out. That's why you can flash right in the middle, right there. Silver from Pelfrey. And it was English on the follow-up. 12 points. The only player who has scored in double figures for both teams is Rodney English, and it's a 37-31 game. Shot clock is still on. Good defense out here. That's five seconds. Pretty close to it. Evan Smith guarded by Mr. Jennings. And a watch for another five-second violation. That was very close. You're right. That was four seconds watching the officials count. Smith forced that one up. An air ball. Rodell Davis on the other side and a foul. You know what's happened with Kevin Smith is he is taking a personal challenge. It's a personal thing to just show Mr. Jennings I'm a better basketball player than you are. Instead of just playing, taking it easy, let it come offensively. You're the lead guard out there, Kevin, and you have to direct the team and get them into their offense. Belfry picks up his third personal foul and goes out of the game, replaced by Major Gear. But, you know, you're talking about a freshman, one of many on this Iowa team against a senior, so that's not a surprising thing. Not at all. Not at all. That's just growth. And, you know, you know, maybe even after halftime, after Tom Davis tells him, hey, settle down and let's run our offense, that, uh, you know, we'll see a turnaround to coming in the second half. Rodell Davis hits the first free throw. He has not been a good one from the line, only 52% coming into this game. Right now, we're going to see some good defensive pressure, I would think, by Iowa. Try and make it difficult to get it in and get a shot opportunity at the other end for East Tennessee State. Now, the big question I have for the second half is what adjustment, if any, does Iowa make with their zone defense because they've really been extended and have big opening gaps in the middle of their zone. James Moses for Rodell Davis in the final seconds of this first half. Here's Mr. Jennings. He sees the clock. He lets it go, and that'll do it. Chris Street will inbound for the white-shirted Iowa Hawkeyes. Troy Skinner is the point guard. James Moses is also in there with James Winters. And the fifth player on the court is Rodell Davis for Iowa. Skinner for three, and he hits it. That's his third of this game. Well, that was well executed. Getting the ball in low and then pitching it back when Jennings came back to help defensively. Keith Jennings is the point guard. Also in there, major gear in the backcourt. Up front, Marty Story, Rodney English, and Darrell Jones in the middle. Now to see what kind of adjustment, if any, that Iowa made with their zone. Are they going to be able to protect the middle and also stop the three-point shot? Buccaneers had as much as a 10-point lead in the first half. Nine on the shot clock. Three seconds. 
story. And finally, Major Gear fires it up. They may not have been sure of the clock, and Moses will be the beneficiary. Notice how I changed quickly yes. of a blocking foul against Mr. Jennings. And that's his second foul. The first one, 22. Mr. Jennings scored only five points in the first half. He came in averaging 20. But East Tennessee State is awesome when they've been leading at halftime this season, 27-2. Looking for the steal, Winters holds on. Good pressure on the basketball. A steal by Rodney English. He'll sail in there. Rodney English with 14 points is the game high score. Boy, he brings an energy level to this ball club on the boards and out to overplaying the passes. He's a junior from Denmark, South Carolina. Here is James Winters. Can't convert inside, and English is tied up, and the possession hour will favor East Tennessee State. A.C. Earl, who's the leading scorer for Iowa at the half with eight, will check back in for the Hawkeyes. So East Tennessee State has forced Iowa into turnovers more than they're used to. Darrell Jones in the two-on-one now. Marty Story. A.C. Earl got back. Major Gear from the corner for three. Rebound by Rodell Davis. You know, I get the impression that Keith Jennings is more like a, a decoy today, you know? Yeah, he's just reading the situation, it appears. You know, when they're coming running at him, he shows unselfishness. And that's what you need from your team leader. You know, he can be out there firing away and taking bad shots, but this is a very well-coached team, and they know what they have to do, and they've had great success with doing, playing this way all year. Second foul for Story, and that will bring A.C. Earl. He tied the Big Ten record for 54 shots blocked this year and had 100 totally on the season as Alvin West comes in for major gear. And I wonder how many shots he changed, not only those block shots, but forced people to take shots they didn't want to take. Ready to come in is Jerry Pelfrey. He is the only member of East Tennessee State with three personal fouls. Yeah, man, we got one. One, guys, on a release, one shot. AC Earl, 66% from the line. He makes them both. Val Barnes checks in for James Moses. Nope, it was Davis who went out, Rodell Davis. So Barnes stays in there along with Moses. Jennings beats the pressure. It's a four-on-two break right now. Pulling up is Alvin West. The street wins the rebound fight. He is 6'8". And just a freshman like many of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Val Barnes from the corner. Pelfrey didn't go out, Lid. He had a two-on-one. Yep, he had a chance to hit Jennings and get another breaking situation. But, hey, they have possession of the ball. That's the important thing for them. It was deflected by Barnes of Iowa. Tennessee State is four for 16 from three-point range. Jennings misses and streaked the rebound, but they don't mind firing him up. Nearly a steal that time by Alvin West. 39 to 38, and Iowa may have a chance to take their first lead since the opening basket of the game as A.C. Earl is fouled. Well, Iowa has come out and done two things to start this first, second half. Number one, we haven't seen East Tennessee State able to get the ball into the lane area, making that direct pass, getting the easy opportunities. And number two, they're getting the ball inside to their big people. Darrell Jones picks up his third foul. He'll come out for Drizel Silvers now. And A.C. Earl is on the line again. He has scored 10 points in the game, four for five from the line. Not only did he continue his fine shot blocking, but he emerged as a scorer for Iowa this year. 
Yeah, he has that ability now. And, you know, you look at Tom Davis and his success working with big people that are not heavily recruited. Brad Lowhouse, Jetson last year, who was drafted by Golden State Warriors. The players have really grown under his direction. The lob pass to Rodney English doesn't work, and Iowa coming back. They can take the lead here. James Moses hits the three, and Iowa is up by a bucket, and a lot of their fans who have made the not-so-long trip from Iowa City to Minneapolis for this game, cheering Iowa's lead at 42-39. Rodney English, he'll come back with a basket and a chance to tie the game on the free throw. Regularly scheduled daytime program was preempted so that we bring you exclusive live coverage of the NCAA basketball championship. A regularly scheduled daytime program will resume on Monday. Dick Stockton, Billy Cunningham. First round action in the Midwest region in Minneapolis. Iowa leading 42-41. East Tennessee State can tie the game. What kind of a game have we seen, Bill? Well, that's the first time we've seen East Tennessee State get the ball into the lane area, and we saw what happens. Right there, English being able to power it to the basket and convert a three-point play. That last foul was on Chris Street, so they're all tied at 42 now. Second tie we've had in this game. We expected this to be an even game. A.C. Earl. Rodney English. He should look like he was bumped and fouled on the play. Well, they called it on English, though. Seton Hall has opened up a 22-point lead over Pepperdine in Salt Lake City. That foul is against James Winters. And they call it on winners. That's the second personal. Each team has three team fouls. Hey, Rodney English is the heart of this team. Isn't he? Even though Jennings gets the heaven. Uh, he has such a task to overcome his size and strength on the inside and compete against these bigger, bigger players. Belfry's playing with three fouls. Jennings with a fake. Rebound into the hands of Kevin Smith. Deflected out of bounds by Jennings. 15-40 remaining in the second half. Kevin Smith. on the loop. Well, yeah, you have to tip your hat to Tom Davis coming out after that timeout with that goal, field goal. Pelfrey lays it in quickly. Did the Buccaneers get down the court? But that's what their style is. They want to push the ball up the court, and if they have a good shot, take it. Otherwise, force the other team to play tough defense. Here's A.C. Earl and a foul. We'll send Earl to the free throw line again. And a chance to break the tie. Rodney English with his first foul and the fourth team foul against the Buccaneers. Now, East Tennessee State has got to make some adjustments. Coach, Coach LaForce has now got to make a decision on what do you do with the big people inside Iowa, which we were able to contain in the first half. Now they're more effective. East Tennessee State out of Johnson City, Tennessee. Here the North Carolina and Virginia scorers. Earl hits the free throws. He's got 13 to lead the Hawkeyes. Here's the pressure. Two-point lead for Iowa. English nearly lost it. Now right there you see the way the zone is. Davis on the top puts pressure on the shooter. Mr. Jennings misses. Welcome to the Metrodome in Minneapolis. The Iowa Hawkeyes after trailing by as much as 10 in the first half. Have forged in front now by a 48 to 44 lead over East Tennessee State in first round action in Minneapolis. The Buccaneers, the Southern Conference champions, playing outstanding basketball. Alvin West has just hit a three to bring East Tennessee State within one, Billy. Well, the tempo was really picking up in this game. In the first half, we saw East Tennessee State use a lot more of the 45 second clock. Now it's quick. A.C. Earl has been the big man for Iowa, their leading scorer with 15 points. And Keith, Mr. Jennings, the 5'7 spark plug for East Tennessee State, has been quiet today, scoring-wise, with only five points. Tom Davis, unbeaten in first-round games. Iowa more accurate, but East Tennessee's 
trying a lot more of the three-pointers. And on the pressure, Val Barnes lays it in. What about this full court pressure? Though? Oh, that's the first turnover they've been able to create for two points off their full court pressure, but not a better time. Rodney English comes back with his 19th point. He's the leading scorer for the Buccaneers in blue. Right now, you'd have to say both teams were just sparring with each other in the first half, feeling each other out because now they're just really going after each other and going to the, each other's strengths. Winner of this game will play Duke in the second round on Saturday. Baseline shot that time by Val Barnes. And the tempo is picked up. 52 to 49, the Hawkeyes. Here is Pelfrey with a three. Barnes the rebound, Iowa. James Moses with the ball. Chris Street looking inside to Val Barnes. Buccaneers 28 and 4, best record in history. And a Johnson City, Tennessee, an enrollment of nearly 12,000. Got a successful year ranked in the top 20. Pelfrey trying to make the extra pass to English. And he hustles back great steal. Trezell Silvers off the glass. Street the rebound. Surrounded by three Buccaneers. And he gets away. The lead is three for the Hawkeyes. Skinner for three, and he's got it. And that's his fourth three-point basket of the game, Troy Skinner. And East Tennessee State looks a little tired, and you have to wonder if the depth of Tom Davis is really a factor right now. East Tennessee State. How do you contain Shaquille O'Neal? That's quite a challenge for anyone. Syracuse Richmond will be a big test, as you've mentioned, for the Orangemen with Richmond's fans down there in College Park. Now, right here with this zone, you see the bigger player out on the point of the zone making it tough on Jennings. Story. Marty Story. And gets the steal after getting the basket. 55-51. 17 turnovers committed by Iowa so far. Major Gear. In Jennings of the guards. Gear is 6-1. Jennings only 5-7. He's got the ball now. Team on Rodney English. Jennings has been held to only five points today. Here's Major Gear. Major Gear. Well, you have to say that timeout helped. They're on a 4 0 run after the timeout. Davis gets it into Earl. And they have a tie up, and the possession hour will still go with Iowa. Now, that was excellent team defense because they were fronting Earl, and two people came from the weak side to give that help, not allowing him to get the easy layup. James Moses checks in for Iowa, number 24. A.C. Earl. Jennings comes down with it. 55-53, to 53. Iowa recently had their biggest lead of six. Buccaneers have cut it down to within a hoop. I think for Jennings to be able to get his jump shot off, he's going to have to move to a wing. Maybe hit, go through, get to the wing, then he'll be able to shoot it. Jennings. And Marty Story goes up, and he's fouled. And Marty Story on that rebound was so smart, he used his, his strength to just push the Iowa player out of position, able to get that offensive rebound. Foul is on A.C. Earl. That'll be his third as Jay Webb comes into the game, replacing Chris Street. Iowa leading by two. Marty Story missed the first free throw, so he cannot tie the game on this possession with 11.07 to go. In the second half, East Tennessee State, 28 and 4, Southern Conference champions, ranked and seeded number 10 against Iowa. No one thought Iowa would be in this tournament when this season started. Now we see East Tennessee State, they're in a zone, playing a 2 3 zone, trying to collapse on the big people. That's where they've been getting hurt, where they see Earl in the low post, so they feel they can, if anything, force the perimeter shot. 
Troy Skinner and Kevin Smith, two point guards, are in the lineup now for the Hawkeyes. Well, the thing about Skinner, though, he has that ability to hit the three-pointer, and he shot the ball well so far today. So that, that's why he can be in there playing with Smith. He's hit four three-pointers, to be exact. Inside, Webb gets in. Jay Webb has it batted away, and it's still Iowa's ball. Let's go, Webb. Seven seconds, though, to attempt a shot. Iowa is six of seven from three-point range, and Mr. Jennings, the 5'7 star, maybe the best little man in the game, has been held to only five points, and A.C. Earl will go to the line as he gets knocked to the floor by Rodney English, and that'll be English's second foul. Duke defeated Northeast Louisiana after leading by only six at the half. They'll play the winner of this game. This looks like this game will go down to the wire. Tonight, LSU against Connecticut and Nebraska versus Xavier. Jerry Pelfrey and Marty Story leaves for East Tennessee. The story gave them a nice lift there for that stretch when they were floundering a little bit. A steal and a couple hoops. Earl is 7 of 10 from the line. Here in Minneapolis, A.C. Earl has just hit one of two free throws to give Iowa a 56 to 54 lead. With 10.25 to go in the second half, Dick Stockton and Billy Cunningham. Here's that full court pressure by Iowa against East Tennessee. Major gear, Mr. Jennings, Mr. Jennings, the much heralded little man who leads in assists, steals, free throws, three pointers, only five points today. And hits a three point basket after missing his last seven shots. Jennings now with eight points. Coming back quickly, Kevin Smith misses a three, and East Tennessee State now leading by one as a result of that three point basket. This has been an outstanding game. Excellent game. Both teams just playing so hard, playing, doing what their coaches want, and there's a turnover. Two different styles of play with two different kind of personnel in this game. Right. East, East Tennessee State, smaller, quicker team, looking for the three-point shot, create turnovers. You look at, you know, Iowa, they like to create the turnovers, but their strength, they're inside people. Winters has come in the game, so right now it's Skinner, Winters, Moses, A.C. Earl, and Rodell Davis for Iowa and White. Winters. And he's tied up, and they'll go back now to East Tennessee State on the held ball. And again, now we see East Tennessee State making that adjustment, going to a matchup zone, because they were getting hurt with the inside power of Iowa when they were playing man-to-man. -man. 18 turnovers forced by the Buccaneers. 28 and 4 out of Johnson City, Tennessee. No strangers to this tournament. Looking to advance to play the Duke Blue Devils. Mr. Jennings. He can't hit two in a row. That's been his problem today. And the rebound by Winters. And the foul will be against Darrell Jones, I believe. But what he's doing is he's rushing things. In that situation, when he penetrated the lane, just the middle part, knowing that the big people, especially A.C. Earl, is standing there that has a chance to block his shot, and I think he rushed it. Darrell Jones now has four fouls, the six, nine and a half sophomore center. One foul away from being disqualified, but Rodney English on the interception, and another Iowa turnover. Well, what it's going to come down to is the perimeter shooting and the quickness of East Tennessee State. Can it be, beat the inside power of this Iowa ball club? Eight and a half minutes remaining in the second half. Buccaneers with the ball, lead by one. Shot clock getting close to the 10-second mark. Well, you see how concerned Iowa is with Mr. Jennings having two people out there on the perimeter on the zone. They ought to be concerned with Rodney English, who has 21 points. Oh, he's been the star. Blocking shots, getting the rebounds, creating turnovers, and as we just saw, scoring. He said rebounds, eight rebounds for English, who's only 6'4". James Moses misses, and there's number nine for English. 
49-56. The Buccaneers lead. One thing you see also now, after the first few, well, the first eight minutes, I say, of the second half, East Tennessee was rushing things when they went to their set offense. Now they're playing with the poise and patience they had in the first half. And they're on a 10-to-1 run. Pelfrey misses a three, and here's English with the rebound in the basket. He is a star today for Alan LaForce. Is he quick off the floor? What determination and heart this young man is playing with. They had a 10-point lead. Iowa came back to lead by six in the second half. But now East Tennessee State is up 61 to 56. Skinner is looking for AC Earl. They help out on him, and Winters tips it in. Good play by James Winters. Tom Davis is 5-0 record in first round games is in jeopardy here. But it's anyone's game at 61-58, under seven minutes to play. You're right, perimeter shooting or power. That's what it comes down to. That's right, and, and also the adjustments that both coaches have made have been just marvelous. Now we see Coach LaFleur going to his uh, zone defense. We see that in the first half that Iowa had problems protecting the middle against East Tennessee State. Now they've made that adjustment. Just a great chess match with these two coaches. Belfry gets it inside. Darrell Jones and A.C. Earl. Didn't even have to jump to get that ball over everybody. James Moses for three. Skinner saves it nicely to Rodell Davis. Spinning in the lane. defense and great offense. This has been a marvelous game in this tournament and a timeout and the crowd enjoys it. It's a three-point shooting bonanza. East Tennessee State has tried 21. They attempted 46 against Marshall in one game. A real exciting down of the wire game faces us here in Minnesota. Iowa leading 63 to 61 over East Tennessee State. A 10-1 run by the Buccaneers. And now Iowa's on a 7-0 scoring splurge. And leading East Tennessee State 63-61. Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham drop the English inside to Marty Story. And he'll go to the line for two. Anytime they've been able to get the ball into that lane area against this 1-2-2 zone, they've scored, created fouls. They've done very well. Now. Alan LaForce, the head coach of East Tennessee State, who waited 33 years for this opportunity with this team, now knows that A.C. Earl has four personal fouls. Earl has left the game now. He has been the big man inside for Iowa. Four fouls on A.C. Earl, replaced by Chris Street. Very good point, because now, does he stay with his zone defense that he had for the last five minutes, or do they go out and play man-to-man -man because that force of Earl is not in the middle? What is Iowa like without Earl? Well, they become a little bit more of a perimeter team. They don't have that force. You know, they'd have to look for Moses. They make Skinner looking for his uh, three-point shot. So it just changes a little bit their approach. Tied at 63. They stayed in the zone. Skinner with the ball. He's got Barnes, Street, Moses, and Winters with him. Biggest man on the floor for Iowa, 6'8". That's Chris Street. Shot clock winding down. Street with a tough shot inside. Tipped up and followed up by James Winters. Good game for Winters. Has six points and made some big shots. And a Hawkeye foul is... Keith, Mr. Jennings hits the deck. Winner of this game will face the Duke Blue Devils, the number two seed in the second round on Saturday. LSU in Connecticut, Nebraska, Xavier battle tonight. In the other half of this draw here in Minnesota. On the steal, Moses has it stripped away by Mr. Jennings. Jennings, averaging 20 a game, has scored only eight today for East Tennessee State. And they're going to need his offense some way, somehow, going down the stretch now. Here's Alvin West missing the three, but Pelfrey on the other side on the line turns it over. Iowa by 
by two. Over there, over there, over there. Kevin Smith, double team, out of street. Now with Earl back in the ball game, you have to think they're going to look to get the ball inside, even against the zone. Try and get it inside to him, and then if he doesn't have it, swing it back outside to one of the perimeter shooters. East Tennessee State in their zone, their matchup zone. Somebody's going to have to do something for Iowa with the ball. Look to penetrate, create something. AC Earl back in the lineup playing with four personal fouls. Here is Street inside, and he's fouled going up. So they got all but two seconds of that shot clock to Tom Davis's delight. And Chris Street, who's a 67% shooter, will go to the line. The personal is on Marty Story, his third. And also the 17 foul, so now the Hawkeyes are in the bonus. Street has yet to score in this game. Right now with this zone. It appears that it's taking away some of the aggressiveness, or it might be a little fatigue on the East Tennessee State team. Question is, can they hold up for another three minutes and ten seconds? The man with the ball has got to get it done now. Keith, Mr. Jennings, on track to become the first player in NCAA history to shoot 60% from the field and 60%, that's right, from three-point range. Now they should find him right over there in the corner. That's the spot I think he should be looking at shooting the ball. He doesn't have to look over the bigger play. Here's Rodney English, misses from the corner. Street, the rebound. They're all over Street, who's a freshman from Indianola, Indiana. A lot of young players on this Iowa team. Maturing quickly today. Leading by three with two and a half minutes to play. Now we see they're coming out East Tennessee State and playing man-to-man -man defense. Kevin Smith, the freshman. Jennings is trying to move him outside. 15 on the shot clock. Smith drives in and is fouled. Fine play by Kevin Smith from Fort Worth, Texas. And he'll go to the line. We're at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota. First round action and regularly scheduled daytime programming has been preempted so that we may bring you exclusive live coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship. And we want to tell you that regularly scheduled daytime programming resumes Monday. Story picks up his fourth personal foul. Two men, two shots. And Kevin Smith, who's a 41% free throw shooter on the line here for Iowa, leading by three. going to ever have great success shooting foul shots in that way. He's just got to get up on the line, get his two feet in whatever position he's comfortable with, stepping forward with one foot, and my goodness, he's just shooting a running one-hander. Story goes out with four fouls and major gear, and they may need major gear to be open for the threes if Jennings is not. Right now they have the most offensive team they could put on the court, East Tennessee State. Troy Skinner replaces Kevin Smith. He did a good job. Two minutes and 10 seconds showing on the clock. East Tennessee State still has one timeout left. Rodney English. Three on one. Goes all the way for the basket. What a move by English. He's got 25. And a smart move. He put the pressure on Earl to make a decision and possibly pick up his fifth foul. And Earl is smart enough not to challenge him. It's a two-point game. Iowa's in front. Deny defense all over the floor. And finally a foul. It'll be a one-in-one -one situation for the Buccaneers. Their 19 foul. 55. And it's on Mr. Jennings. That'll be three on Jennings. Tom Davis, 5-0 is his record in first round play in NCAA tournament. As a head coach, Boston College and here at Iowa. Just wonder if he had played a team anything like East Tennessee State in that first round. Doubt it. 
Eight for 12 from the line, but James Moses comes back with a very big offensive rebound. And we've seen in the last 10 minutes, Iowa's size and strength becoming more and more of a factor on both boys. Offensive foul called against Troy Skinner. And that'll give East Tennessee State a life, and that's four on the junior point guard. Offensive foul. An interesting dilemma for Tom Davis. Kevin Smith can beat Jennings off the dribble, but he's a terrible foul shooter. Can't have him in the ball game. Skinner doesn't have that kind of quickness, and Jennings can move his feet and beat him to the spot, as we just saw. Rodell Davis in for Iowa. East Tennessee State is only one timeout. There is a turnover and a big basket by James Moses. I think Rodell Davis helped get the ball. He was responsible for the turnover. 69-65. Missing the three is Alvin West. And a jump ball or a tie-up gives the ball back to Iowa in a big sequence there. Uh, that was a big turnover by Pelfrey. It was Rodell Davis who topped the ball to James Moses who scored. Close to a minute remaining. One of the players you don't want to foul is Skinner. He's shooting 84% from the foul line. And a timeout called by Iowa. Iowa leading 69 to 65 and inbounding the ball with one minute to go. Only one timeout left for East Tennessee State. Their next foul will be two shots at the line for Iowa. Controlling is Troy Skinner. He and Val Barnes are the only good free throw shooters. The rest are not good free throw shooters for Iowa, and they foul A.C. Earl. And that's why Jennings didn't take that foul at that point. And that'll be the fifth foul for Marty Story, the junior from Greenville, Tennessee, who was fouled out of the game, having scored seven points. And he'll be back next year. You know, a point you made earlier, Dick, about this young Iowa team. Have you been impressed with their mental toughness, though? Here's that they were down 10 in the first half. Tough ball game, being able to hang in there and uh, show a lot of maturity out here on the ball court. On the, on the court. A lot of it comes from Tom Davis because it's been the same system wherever he has coached, and he's done it with a lot of young people over the years. A.C. Earl gets them both. He's got 18 points. 71 to 65. And Alan LaForce is signaling that he wants a timeout when they get it to midcourt. Mr. Jennings gets it there. He did not see him. He wanted a timeout. Called it off. Major Gear hits the shot, and now comes the timeout. Well, right now, East Tennessee State will look to, to go for the steal now. If they don't get the steal, steal, they have to foul. The only guy they don't want to foul is right there. Now they have to take the foul. And they do with Chris Street, who's a 67 percenter from the line. East Tennessee State had used its last time out. And Street will go to the line to shoot two shots because, because they have over 10 fouls. For two from the line today. And because they reached 10 fouls, the one and one was no longer in effect. So there's where it could hurt East Tennessee State if Street makes the second, which he does. And, and it's 72 to 67. That's a mean looking mascot. <laughs> Here's the full court pressure. No timeouts left for the Buccaneers. Steal by Street. Trying to get it back was Alvin West. And it's Iowa's ball. And that pressure defense has worn this East Tennessee team down. Val Barnes back in the lineup for Iowa. They wore him down on the boards in particular. Earl has the ball knocked away. Here's. He's got to look for the three. Mr. Jennings firing and hitting the three. He's now three for eight from that range. Cuts the lead to two, 72 to 70. But Pelfrey 
He, Pelfrey had no choice. No choice. You don't want to foul Skinner. Everyone in the building knows that he's an 85, 84 percent foul shooter. But with only 16.6 wow. seconds left three. in the game, you, you, have, you have to grab the first guy. You're right. Troy Skinner is the fourth leading free throw shooter in the Big Ten. But all Pelfrey's trying to do is stop the clock. And so when you look at who to foul, that's really unrealistic. And that's the only way they have the ability to stop the clock. They have no timeouts left, whereas Iowa has two left. Here is Troy Skinner. First trip to the line today. This is a big one. Because this would give Iowa a four-point lead. There's plenty of time left in this game, even if he makes it. 74 to 70. Rodell Davis comes in for Val Barnes. Davis, the better defensive player. What they have to do is get it in the hands of that man. That man, Jennings, and let him push the ball down the court. See the take the three for himself. Look, look to the wing for major gear, possibly for West. Moses is on. Mr. Jennings Pelfrey hits a three, and it's a one-point game with seven seconds to go. They've got a foul quickly, and Moses will be fouled. A 68% free throw shooter, and now East Tennessee State will have one more shot, even if he makes the two free throws, to get back and tie this. Now, here's a big shot by Pelfrey right there. That was well out of his range. Hits the shot, great one. But now the problem is with 2.8 seconds left, even if the shot is missed, the foul shot, will they have time to make a pass or even get any type of shot up? Uh, it's going to be tough. Final scores of first round action in the NCAA tournament. Now you look at this East Tennessee State team and just you wonder what would it have been like if they had Dennis and Talford on this ball court. Their second leading scorer and their big center. Oh, we're talking about 35 points a game that could have been on this court today playing against the Iowa Hawkeyes. Now East Tennessee State has brought in Eric Palmer, the 5'6 freshman for Pelfrey, who fouled out of the game. So they've got Palmer at 5'6 and Jennings at 5'7 to try to get the 2.8 to go to shot. Shoot. Now, probably the best thing right now for East Tennessee State is he misses the first one, which he didn't, and made the second one where they could have inbounded the pick. It's probably better he makes this one and maybe throw a long pass and have a chance to the shot. If he misses it, I don't think they'll have time to advance the basketball quick, quick enough. Val Barnes for Chris Street. So it's quickness against quickness, and the one man who's big down court is A.C. Earl. But you know, he ought to play up on that three-point line. calls the timeout. Well, it's going to be a prayer. There'll be good pre defensive pressure on the ball out of bounds by Iowa. They're going to have to make a long pass and possibly get the shot. That's too short. He won't be able to get it off. He gets fouled with eight-tenths of a second by Kevin Smith. Now, that's a good play by Tom Davis because that'll be only two shots at the foul line. He wasn't in the act where he would have gotten a three-point shot. He would have gotten three foul shots. Foul. So now what they have to do is they have to make the first foul shot. They're going to have to miss the second foul shot and hope somebody like English can crash into the lane area, get a tip, possibly tie this ball game up. Brazil so Silvers comes into the game replacing Alvin West. So they've got Silvers at 6'5", who can jump, and Darrell Jones at 6'9". Major gear, 76% from the line. But he's got to make one. He's got to make the first, and then he's got to miss the second. That's right. And, and all luck comes into that play. Which way does the ball bounce? Doesn't matter. He misses. Street has it. The game is over, and Iowa wins it to advance. And Tom Davis 6-0 in first-round play. 25,759 here at the Metrodome. See Iowa defeat East Tennessee State 76 to 73.